is a quick tutorial on some things we need you to look into in your Sinclair DNA kit, which is hosted at Family Tree DNA. First, for those that don't know how to find us, I want to point out that the Sinclair DNA study has several properties that we maintain. If you do a search for Sinclair DNA, you'll see the first two links are most likely Family Tree DNA. If you go down a little further, there's stclairresearch.com. stclairresearch.com is the site that I maintain where I put up our thoughts, uh, some news, and this site is about to undergo a major, a major uh, upgrade because it's been a real pain keeping this thing up to date because the software that runs it is clunky and uh, very difficult to make changes to. So I'm going to be moving it over to a WordPress platform and we're going to be putting up uh, a great deal more information more often. So that's the St. Clair Research page, which is stclairresearch.com. There's the URL if for those who want to find it. But the one I want to talk about today is this one, which is our Sinclair DNA study at Family Tree DNA. They give us this uh, page that, uh, that we use. And I'm already logged in. If you're not logged in and you're not a member, you'll see a big button here that will say join. But I'm already logged in. Specifically today, I want to walk you through two parts of this. First, the DNA results over here. You can click it here or here. And I'm going to click it over here and go to classic chart. Takes a little while. There's 350 kits in here. First, I want to point out this has changed quite a bit and now resembles the major SNP studies that are happening in the world. And this is entirely the work of my good friend Craig Sinclair of, of England. And he's, he's arranged this all and broken it down. Every single member of the study now is broken down into their, their most recent SNP. So when you see one like this, the Herdmanston uh, lineage is at the very top. They are part of a P310 group, P311. These are old SNPs, really old. The further right you go up here, the more recent you get, right down to family SNPs. Then you get down into the ancestral Orkneys, and notice they're marked ancestral, which means we, we know they are a particular line, at least as far as we can know. So we know these are the Herdmanstons, in fact, because there's a person that we tested who still his family still lives on the land which they received in 1162 in Scotland. And they've lived there to this day. With regards to the or or Orkney earldom, you can see they've done quite a bit of SNP testing all the way across to their actual family SNP. But here's the Orkney and Caithness earldom, Caithness cluster. So again, it's an ancestral group. There's three of these. Here's the big gap in this. As you go down, you see great detail in here. This person goes back to the Shetlands. We know they go back and uh, died in 1789. They put in some very good detail. Then you get down into these kit numbers, and these are people who are part of the study who just have not filled out their data to tell us how far back their oldest ancestor goes and where they were. You can see the perfect way to do it is here. This is the name of the oldest ancestor, born this date, they told us which part of Argyll they were born in, and we know that they're part of our Z2 lineage. These folks down here know that they need to order the R1B M343 SNP pack from Family Tree DNA. And if you get confused about how to do that, we'll be showing you how to do it in the next video. But let's get back to this. I want to show you how to fill in this data so that you can help us out. To do that, we're going to go back to your kit. This is mine. And I'm going to click into my personal information. <clears throat> this defaults to personal profile, contact info, account settings, genealogy, beneficiary information, and privacy settings. So my personal profile is just my details, which you know are publicly available. Contact information, phone number, email address, that kind of thing. My account settings is... Um, where I tell my little story and where you have to look at my stupid photo. Uh, match email settings, change passwords, personal profile settings. So there are some steps down within these that you could do. That one didn't have it. Personal profile didn't have it. Account settings has some steps below it that you can do. 
genealogy. So regarding genealogy, it has this right here, most distant ancestors. That's what I want you to fill out, because right here is the part that will show up in that big gap in the DNA study. Please, everyone in the study should fill this out. And if you, if you filled it out with just a date, uh, we need to know the name and we need to know the location. And this, this actual way of filling it out would be very helpful if you could follow this. If you have a hard date and you know it, then put it in. Mine is a circa date, so we know that he was born approximately in 1666 because of what he said in a court deposition in the 1720s when he was over in Virginia. And he told us he was of Glasgow. So the genealogists I've talked to all over Scotland tell me that when someone says they're of Glasgow, it means they were born in Glasgow. Now, there's a chance that's wrong. There's a chance he was not born in Glasgow. We don't have the record. But we have him saying he was of Glasgow. So that's the way I put it in here. That's the fact that we know is he said that. We don't know if that means definitely that he's of Glasgow. But I want to be able to help anyone looking at this study what we think we know. And that's, that's what you should put in. If the fact that you have is not birth or death date, but that he left for Virginia on a ship called Loyalty, put that in. I would just put the date, 1698, ship Loyalty, there. So we know something based on a time period. Um, one other quick point I want to make is up here called Beneficiary Information. Please do this. Please fill this out, because if you get hit by a bus, we're not going to have access to your kit, and no one will. But if you do this in advance, everything will be covered. Your kit will be able to be managed moving forward. Your kit will never go away. It doesn't leave the study. We've had people who in, in the study who passed away many, many years ago, but their kits are still in. And I can still order testing on those as the project admin, which I've done many times for people who've passed away, just to further the results of the study. That's it for now. Uh, please be sure to set your privacy. This is something to check because many people don't know it, but their privacy settings are prohibiting them from showing up in the project. That's it for today. There'll be more of these training videos coming very soon.